Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about coding exercises. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a little bit of a story, but it goes, Frederick, I have a question. I study computer science and I have seen, the pa seen that passing exams are only about doing some stupid and boring coding exercises. And I watched many videos about programming job interviews and they also rely on those stupid and boring coding exercises. If I would make a game or a website myself, I wouldn't even need that knowledge and, even <clears throat> and never use those techniques. I thought programming was about creating something. Is this really what you are doing at a job? Some boring code tasks like for example making some loop or bubble sorting and, array, uh, and, or, and arranging arrays. I thought I would be free to make my own things to create something. Did I get everything wrong? Well I can very happily say that no you didn't get anything get, get anything wrong but I think that I need to give you some understanding of the limitations of software engineering so first and foremost let's get the obvious stuff out of the way the reason why you are learning about bubble sorting the reason why you the computer science classes that you're taking is practically all about algorithms and data structures and all that stuff is because these are the fundamental building blocks that you use as a software developer it is uh, the education system in many cases is taking a bottom-up approach in other words you're learning the base layers before you get to the interesting interesting stuff which is the stuff that you're gonna do every single day of work that is not necessarily the best way to keep uh, students inspired but it is the common strategy. In the job interviewing processes, the same sort of um, tests and coding challenges apply. In some cases, it's not always the case. There are, there's usually a 50-50 split, where in some companies they will test you on your uh, algorithmic thinking, and in some companies they will test you on like more real-world examples, depending on their strategy. The reason why the algorithmic ones are fairly popular is because it's a very cheap way to test if someone knows how to code because if you you may not know this but it actually takes a lot of time to prepare a code test send that out to some person and depending on how many how much time they have to evaluate and go through all of these candidates because it's not like one candidate people screen uh, before they hire somebody guys it can be over a hundred people and as you can imagine if you have a code test that takes several hours to make and then you have to review everything that takes is also several hours to review it and evaluate and you have a hundred people it's gonna take a long time but if you just have a very silly little bubble sorting algorithm you can send that out uh, immediately and get the reply back there are mm, it's not always a good strategy but it is a very popular strategy but when you're doing your actual work it's very rare that those die-hard algorithmic problems that you're studying is going to be something that you do in the normal grind. Sometimes it is actually absolutely useful. An example would be if you want to make a computer game. Well, it depends a little bit on the computer game, but uh, if you're going to build... Like, um, not going to go too far now but there are many problems that you would need to have an understanding of computer science related algorithms to build a computer game one of my favorite algorithmic problems which uh, have you, if you've ever played one of the uh, these types of stra uh, turn based strategy games where you're moving a character over a screen and you know those arrows that figure out the path the character is going to take how do you think that that is being calculated because it's auto is magically it's actually creating this path for you you probably have something already done in a library somewhere but the fundamental implementation is i think it's i mean it's basically a graph searching algorithm i'm not going to say it's the dijkstra algorithm but it's something similar to that where you're figuring out what's the sh the cheapest path to get to your destination on a screen of nodes or of, of uh, on uh, 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 on, on a node tree, in a node tree. So, uh, the, the these things are not pointless, it's just that it's definitely uh, it's definitely not something that you have to worry that you're gonna do every single day, because it's not representing what the normal work is. However, you also ask about you were you should if you're able to build your own things yes you are within reason but it varies a little bit on from company to company if your idea of building something yourself is that 
you're just going to make every decision yourself and you should be able to pick whatever language you want or you should be able to pick uh, if, if you want to work in a functional style or an object oriented style or things like that it's that's simply not gonna work because you, most of what you're gonna do is that you're gonna go to a company that has already made a project where there is an existing code base and you have to figure out what are the patterns that they follow in that code base. You can absolutely change them if you convince your coworkers that that's a good idea. And once again, that depends on the company. How much wiggle room do you have? How much freedom do you have to make your own decisions and follow your own standards or change people's minds? And you will have heard me, if you've watched my other videos, how important soft skills are in order to do this because you can be the best programmer in the world and you can have the best ideas and nobody's going to hear you out and since you're not alone on the project well depending on the company they're just going to tell you no we're not going to do that and it doesn't matter how you feel about it you can scream and fuss as much as you want unless everybody else is on board it's not happening How on the other hand if you're working by yourself as a freelancer or things like that well then you can do whatever you want nobody because no customer is going to care as long as it fills their requirements and it's very rare that a customer will come with very specific requirements on things like oh you should work in that language or in that paradigm and just use those tools then you're kind of free to do whatever you want so what I want you to take away from this is that you can relax if you're not finding these algorithmic problems all that fun if you're going through college or computer science classes and stuff like that it's you can think of these things as very healthy useful things for you to know but uh, uh, and you will face them in some coding interviews not so much in the actual work that you do think of it as extra courses that you need to take just to get your degree you just need to f it's not the f primary fo it shouldn't be the primary focus necessarily or it's not the most fun thing in the world but you need them just to get through the door that's that's a very very i think a healthy way of thinking about it once you're doing actual work, you're still limited to some degree because you can't just do whatever you want because we, we can't sustain, we, we, the product will fall to shit if we have three different developers who all write in their own styles and their own languages. We have to agree on something. And here is where the soft skills really come into play because if you want your voice to be heard when you're trying to make technical decisions in your team, the more persuasive you can be and the better informed you are the more likely people are to listen to you and then you will get to be able to do what you want otherwise you're gonna have to just adjust to doing things the way that is being already done at the product that you are working at have a great day